Hi folks, it's PCUSB projects. I'm still worried about Raspberry Pi's future. I know that there is a large Raspberry Pi community who admire Raspberry Pi 5. Many young people will need much more powerful computers in the future. I worked hard to discover what kind of technology is needed to make Raspberry Pi 5 considerably more powerful and even more powerful than an, an average classic PC. To see whether there is a desktop PC in makings that could either replace Raspberry Pi 5 or be a raw model for Raspberry Pi 6. There are not many desktop computer options for ARM64 architecture. Most of them are single bolt computers. Probably one of the most powerful up to date is Redsa Orion 06. But if you are looking for a desktop computer that can compete with Intel and AMD designs, we have to look for some kind of a derivative of a server computer. This is, for example, a computer with Empire Ultra processor, which has Neoverse N1 cores and has plenty of them, say at least 32 or even 128. So this is a really packed with cores processor. They are much newer than Cortex-A76 cores that are used for Raspberry Pi system on chip PCM2712. Believe it or not, you can start with SROC motherboard for Empire Ultra processors. At Newegg, you can buy a bare motherboard for around $800 or a motherboard with a pre-installed Empire Ultra with 64 cores processor for around $1,400 or a motherboard with pre-installed Empire Ultra processor with 128 cores for around $2,300. If this is not enough, let me tell you that there are servers which do Empire One or Empire Ultra sockets. Empire One is a more capable processor with newer Neoverse V3 cores that are based on ARM64 8.6 generation technology, newer than 8.2 generation technology used in Neoverse and one cores. Ampere one processor can have up to 192 cores, which is considerably more than Ampere Ultra Max with 128 cores. Two of them packed together on the same motherboard, therefore can have 384 cores, which is crazy. This configuration seems to be prohibitively expensive and may not have been tested by workstation makers like System76. However, 16 lane PCIe Generation 5 bus is available. There is probably no reason why a graphics card couldn't be sticked in and tested. Probably even more than one graphics card can be installed. The rest is just like building any other PC. You have to get yourself a powerful enough ATX power supply. The only difference is that you need a wire adapter from 24 pins to 4 pins to provide standby voltage power on indicator signal and power supply full activation from standby mode signal. The other three connectors are to provide 12 volt power supply only. However, you have to consider power consumption of the motherboard together with the main processor as well as power consumption of the graphics card. For example, a 1000 watt power supply may not be a bad choice if you are using a real powerful graphics card. You need RAMs, so you also need SSD drives. If you are buying a motherboard together with a processor, a passive cooler may be included in a bundle, but you may prefer an active cooler with a fan. There is a variety of different options, including a very efficient Arctic freezer that looks strikingly similar to my desktop Pi cooler that I have attached to my Raspberry Pi 5 with 16GB of RAM. There would probably also be a number of fans attached to the case that would provide fast enough airflow to cool all the components. If you want to run Windows 11 for ARM64 architecture, you'll also need the TPM 2.0 module with SPI connector and not the one that is usually used for classic species. Now we only have to add an SSD drive to M.2 slot and the computer is good to go. Technically, this is a single board computer, just like Raspberry Pi 5. There is even an inbuilt 2D graphics controller, which is part of AS Speed 2500 chip, which connects to the South Bridge. South Bridge is connected to the North Bridge, which is the first chip in line to connect to the processor itself. North Bridge supports eight memory slots, a very capable 
4 generation PCIe controller with 128 lanes is implemented in the processor chip. It is externally split to 4 16 lane channels and 8 8 lane PCIe channels. If you are building a workstation instead of a server, you may want to use one of these for a powerful graphics card. Interestingly, you can connect the same graphics card to a Raspberry Pi 5 through an appropriate interface, which is very cheap to buy. However, running the same graphics card on a SROC motherboard with Ampere Ultra processor is of course much more efficient and you can achieve tremendous speeds. You can beat most of PCs with Intel and AMD processors, except for the fastest ones that also use this kind of graphics card and enable very fast communications between graphics cards, processing cores and main memory, as well as SSD drives. If you want to have a real powerful Raspberry Pi like computer built on RM64 architecture, only one thing is missing and this is 40 pin expansion port. There are two options of implementing it, either with RP1 microcontroller connected directly to the PCIe bus or RP2040 microcontroller connected through a USB port. This option is also used with Redsa X4 single board computer. This is how you can build the most powerful Raspberry Pi like computer of all times with the current technology. However, if you are not keen on building desktop PCs, you can also opt for an already assembled System76 Tilio Astra workstation. There is a large variety of configuration options, ranging from $3,299 to more than $23,000 for the most powerful configuration with 512 gigabytes of RAM and insanely powerful NVIDIA RTX 6000 ADA graphics cards with 48 gigabytes of RAM. However, this computer was designed to run Ubuntu Linux and not Windows 11, therefore you will have to buy a TPM 2.0 module for about $20 from ASRock separately. And now let's talk about optimization of a such of Raspberry Pi design. If you keep the processor Empire Ultra Max, then we would also need a North Bridge and a South Bridge. But system management chip, which is Air Speed 2500 chip, may be replaced by something that would succeed RP1 microcontroller. The major difference between RP1 microcontroller and let's say RP3 or the next generation, we, we also call RP2040 and RP2350 chips like RP1, uh, RP2 chips, but then okay we can say RP3 chip that would also connect to the PCIe bus and that would be able to start properly Ampere Ultra processor. So th there should be some kind of processor management chip that would actually use much of a hardware from RP1 microcontroller except for the fact that it would have to be capable of reading BIOS from an EEPROM, probably a serial EEPROM to RAM and starting the main uh, processor to start booting. The current design of AS Rock motherboard is using AS Speed 2500 chip for this purpose, but Raspberry Pi, uh, we can call it a muscle Raspberry Pi, could use some kind of a peripheral controller because we don't actually need an additional graphics card in this kind of computer. It's a desktop and doesn't make any sense of having a simple video core or maybe BCM2712 could be modified to keep just the video core and it could also be used to handle peripherals. This would be another option but would have no processing cores like it has now. An interesting option but probably much more expensive than modifying RP1 microcontroller. If you've liked this video please press like and subscribe buttons and don't forget about the notification bell. See you in the next video. Bye.